Hi, Chris here with the Show Me Me Notebook Air. Now, in this particular video, I'm going to show you how to open it up. Now, this should apply to the 13.3 inch model as well. And I'll quickly show you the internals and how you can add an extra SSD or upgrade your SSD. So you're going to need a T5 Torx bit. And remove all seven Torx screws to gain access to the internals. Now the last screw is really tricky. It is underneath the rubber foot here at the top. So you need to pry that off. Use a guitar pick or a credit card like I used here. And then unscrew that one. Now prying it open in the beginning is very difficult. I found the best place to start was just at the back here. To force your guitar pick or credit card along here. And very carefully unclip the plastic clips you'll see in here. Now those clips are on quite solidly there. And there could even be... Uh, some double-sided tape that is helping to hold some places down near the ports. Just take your time and go along very carefully and try not to damage the aluminium. If you use something like a knife, then you will definitely scratch and damage it. Now the front left and right sides are quite tight, those clips, so just take your time again and unclip those on either side and then you'll be able to just push down and then pry the lid off. So here we have the internals. There's our SATA SSD. Now it's a Samsung drive. And the length of this particular model is 80 millimeters. So it's going to be the 2280. You'll see there, 80 millimeters. That's the length. And the secondary drive there. So the layout of this is really well done. We see we have a large heat sink that goes across the whole motherboard there. And there's where the Core M3 is. The battery has a metal frame in there. It has a plastic inner frame that they have used that is screwed into the, well, glued into the metal, and then all the components are screwed in, the, in there. There are the speakers left and right, so you have to be extra careful when you pass your guitar pick or your pry tool along the side here that you don't damage those seals there, because if you do damage those seals, later on you could have vibrations with the speakers playing back there. Now we'll give you a close up here. You can see they do have plans to have an LTE, so 4G modem support right here. You can see that you can insert a, an M2-2260 modem in there. So they have plans for that. There's our wireless, our Intel wireless chipset there. The antennas, as I thought, connect up to the plastic backing. That is why they have plastic along the top here. So it does look very nice, the internals here. So this must be the reason why it doesn't actually go over about 70 degrees when gaming and benchmarking is because they do have heat pipes here. They're running from one side along to the other, each side there. And that's something I haven't actually seen done on, for well, the stuff out of China at least, that have core M's. Normally they just put a heat sink on the top, but uh, show me here have gone a step further, which is really good. If you're a bit of a modder and you wanted to go a step further yourself, you can put a thermal pad on the top here. It'd have to be a very thin one. I would suggest about one millimeter and that will transfer heat to the rear alloy housing, but of course that's going to come at the price of increased heat of the surface temperatures of the bottom of it. So if you're someone that uses this on your lap, then it's going to heat up a lot and probably won't be worth doing that mod. So on with the upgraded hand. Now if you were going to change the main primary drive, then you'd replace this one here. Unscrew that, slot it out. Make sure you make a Windows backup though. You can do that with the Windows 7 backup tool within Windows there. That will create an image and then you can restore that later on. Exactly how you, you left it is how it will restore it. So that is really good. Now we could fit in here smaller drives, for example the 22 by 42 millimeter or the 22 by 60, which I happen to have one of those with me. This is a SanDisk and here's one right here. But the problem is it'll fit in there, but there's no way of actually securing that in place because there's no screw along here so you'd often you'd have to glue that down in place and honestly i wouldn't really recommend doing that but it could work all right i would just edit this in so i did a little test here i put my sand disk sata 3 in the slot and powered up the system and what do you know it's not even detected and then i looked at it further in the motherboard and it actually says pcie so that's interesting the boot drive is SATA 3, but this is PCIe. Now, I don't imagine that's going to be your super fast PCIe 4 lanes. Probably just be the lower, slower one, but who knows? So, I can't use a SATA 3 in there, so make sure you get a PCIe SSD for your secondary drive. 
And lastly, if we were to replace the battery, imagine in two years time it started to wear out, it wasn't holding its charge, then we simply unplug here and we'd be able to unscrew this and get a, a show me replacement and put that back in there. Okay, and to put it all back together, simply put the lid back on, clip it all down in place. I would start with the bottom first. You can slot that in and then go up the sides and the back, put all the screws, the torque screws back in there and don't forget that rubber foot there. And you are done. Now I wouldn't call this really user replaceable because prying open, getting this back lid off is actually a little bit more difficult. And the average doe trying to do this could end up damaging it and they might not be happy with the fact that they could have scratched or bent the backing on it. So only really do this if you have experience in doing this kind of thing before. If not, send it to perhaps a service technician or another tech, someone who's done this before and show them this video too. Thank you so much for watching. Now, if you did like this video, why not subscribe? I do have more up and coming on the Me Notebook here.